Hi, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the webinar. Uh, we're going to be talking around information and data security today and how you can deal with the types of threats that are happening and the threat landscape and what businesses can actually do about it. So I'd like to welcome everybody here today to the webinar and thank you very much for taking your time to join us. Uh, it's we often run a lot of these different webinars. This one particularly is on information and data security, but we also run a whole series of them. Please feel free to go onto the website, imsm.com, where we'll be covering a lot more different webinars and different topics. And there's a lot of topical issues that we'll discuss. There's also opportunity to download case studies, white papers, etc. So, you know, please feel free to uh, go onto the website or if you could, Go on to LinkedIn and there's a lot of events that we run around there as well. So, again, please feel free to do that. We've got a relatively busy agenda today, but don't worry, it's not sort of death by PowerPoint. I want to try and keep it as concise and as uh, informative as possible. If you do have any questions, please feel free to pop them into the chat window and we'll try and cover those off towards the end. So we're going to talk about why anything. Why is information and data security important? You know, what is the impact to businesses today? What are we actually seeing in the marketplace? What types of attacks are actually happening? And how are businesses actually coping with these attacks? Talking about the, how changes have actually happened. You know, the pandemic has played a large part in it, but it's not just the only thing. There are other areas of business around digital transformation, around the Internet of Things, around just how businesses are adapting their processes and procedures and the way they work to get maximum impact into their marketplace. We we'll talk about different options. Obviously, ISO 27001, which I'll be covering off a little bit later towards the slide deck, is a very important standard and framework to help organizations protect their information and data. But obviously, there are other options out there, and I'll cover those off of uh, what businesses can actually do to help improve their security. Talk about why now? Why is it important to do anything? But particularly, why now? And then obviously why IMSM, how we can help businesses and the types of businesses we've helped before around implementing ISO standards like ISO 27001 or 9001 for quality or 14001, et cetera, et cetera. Then just to sort of finish off, sort of summary conclusion and then a Q&A session towards the end. So again, thank you very much and let's begin. So, you know, why anything? You know, when I first started off in business, our idea of protecting our information and data was making sure a filing cabinet was locked. We weren't sharing digital information with customers or sending out uh, documentation, etc. And there was no real threat to that particular data unless the key got lost. But now organizations depend absolutely on the information they hold. Now, whether that information be customer details or designs or intellectual property or documentation, uh, IP, you know, public uh, personal identifiable information, we require absolutely that information is always available to the right people at the right time. But when it's threatened or you can't get access to that information or it's compromised or it's just not there, it's almost impossible these days to make fact-based decisions. You know, how do you know which customers to call? How do you know what products and services they've got? How do you know what the designs are if you can't get hold of that information? And these days, I think with a lot more electronic and the way things are stored digitally, it's becoming harder and harder to protect. And that's really why anything, because without that information, without having access to it, when you want it and the right people have an access to it at the right time, it's almost impossible to start making business decisions and drive your businesses forward or just even do the day to day operational activities that a business needs to do. But like I said at the top of the call, it's not just about the pandemic. You know, we all work in this extended ecosystem now. We all have suppliers that provide either products or services or some form of business value to us as an organization. And we share information with those organizations and we need to protect against that. Digital transformation, a lot of organizations, especially since the pandemic, there's been a huge, huge increase in digitally transforming a business 
taking what traditionally would be a paper-based process or paper-based system and digitizing that, making it electronic, which means you've got to store more data, which means that that data needs to be protected, needs to be thought about, needs to be, you need to understand who can access it, when they can access it and why they can access it and making sure that it's always available. IoT is one of my sort of pet favorites. Uh, with more and more connected devices, it means more and more data is produced. Uh, I've worked on projects in previous lives with large, uh, let's say, soft drinks manufacturing companies where they was basically connecting all of their vending machines to the Internet and then storing information and gathering information from those uh, devices to help them around maintenance, to help them improve their business processes, to help them understand the throughput of drinks going out of that machine. And it produces more and more data. You know, there's lots of connected cities that are now starting to use IoT, whether that be smart roads, smart car parks, or just smart lighting systems. And all of these is producing more and more information. And that information needs to be protected. Businesses are evolving, and never so much in the sort of climate that we've been through in the last sort of 18 months. You know, business processes are changes. Organizations are looking for new markets to go into, looking for new revenue streams, looking for, to improve their business processes to bring efficiency and operational effectiveness into their businesses. And again, all of this is changing because the digital assets are changing. What is a information asset now? It used to be a paper-based system. And when we cover off ISO 27001, it's not just about IT, even though IT is an incredibly important part of it. It's about the whole information, whether that be digital through digital transformation or whether that be a paper-based system. But the assets are changing and the value of those assets are changing within an organization. Obviously, we see things like customer data being an incredibly valuable asset and needs to be protected. But it is also how you work is a digital asset and needs to be protected. How you operate as an organization, how you develop products, how you develop services. These assets are changing constantly because businesses are evolving. But the threat's changing. You know, is we've all seen in recent cases of large ransomware attacks on organizations. Uh, Volkswagen was hit last week. Uh, Apple hit through one of its third party suppliers, Quanta. Again, these threats are changing. E business email compromise, account takeover attacks, phishing attacks, spear attacks. There's lots of different threats are happening to businesses that can affect their data and their information. But also the vulnerabilities are changing because more people are putting information digitally. They're becoming more vulnerable. You know, do you have the correct firewall technology in place? Do you have the correct email security, web security, cloud security? But these vulnerabilities are changing and need to be adapted. How does a business evolve and how does it actually work towards targeting these vulnerabilities and making sure that they won't impact you as a business? Obviously, governance plays a key part with GDPR, with Brexit. You know, if you're sharing information with an organization as a data processor or data subscriber, how do you know if they're looking after that data for you? And cyber attacks, which I mentioned a few minutes ago, on the increase, whether that be through malicious attacks, through targeted attacks, or just through internal attacks, uh, through just poor management of how people access data and information, who has the right to send documents out of the organization, how do, is access control managed, how is it all controlled to make sure the right people have access to the right information, but can't necessarily share that with a wider audience unless they've got the permissions to do so. And these are areas that just need to be considered around information and data security. Obviously, we've seen a lot around third party attacks where uh, let's just call them the cyber criminals are looking for what they perceive as the weaker link within there. So it might not just be yourself that's being attacked. It could be your third parties. So knowing how you share information with those third parties, but also how they protect your data when they've actually got it. If you're using outsourced marketing company and you're sharing contact information and personal identifiable information, you need to bear in mind and think about 
how that third party is protecting your data. Do they have the required processes in place? Are they ISO certified? You know, these are the types of questions that I think you should ask your suppliers in terms of can they protect your data and your intellectual property, your personal identifiable information if they're managing it on your behalf? But there's also the new, big new challenge of working from home. You know, can the users print off documentation? What are they actually doing with it? Are they, you know, you know, it's like when you work from home, you almost have a very slightly different mindset. And businesses have been working from home now for many, many, many months. But those they throw up new challenges of how do you control the data when the users are not in your office environment? So again, areas like this need to be looked at and need to be considered when you're trying to protect your information and data assets for businesses when your employees are working from home. So what's the impact? You know, with recent research that's been done by either Poneman or the IBM Cost of Data Breach and uh, Gartner have done studies on this, 67% of CIOs believe that their data will be breached in some form of cyber attack. But a lot of these cyber attacks that are happening on organizations happened months and months ago. And they're only discovering it. And it's almost like six to nine months for an organization to discover if they've had a data breach. But businesses now are working, like I said earlier, with an extended ecosystem. And 55% of these organizations work with partners to reduce the security risks. And IMSM are just another partner that can be bought in to help you reduce your risks based with data and information. And nearly 50% of all businesses have experienced at least one cyber attack in the last year. A lot of organizations are experiencing multiple cyber attacks. If you look at some of the industries that are high targets, I was with a customer yesterday that worked in the gaming industry and online gaming. They are hit constantly uh, because they know the value of the information that that organization holds because they hold credit card information, betting information, personal information on those organizations. They're really high net value or high value targets the hackers and the people that want to try and exploit weaknesses within people's cyber security. And if you look at some of the high impact cases, you know, British Airways fined 183 million for a data breach, Marriott 99 million, Equifax 500,000 for failing to protect the personal information of over 15 million UK citizens. Now, these, tax are, these attacks are happening and the impact can be absolutely huge. It can be completely devastating for a business if they're attacked and it's successful. It can be damage to reputation, damage to brand. It can be loss of revenue, loss of customers. You know, the impacts can be absolutely huge. And obviously, the cases that I've just shown you there, the sort of real sort of high profile accounts, these businesses have survived because they've got a lot of cash reserves. Well, they did have obviously post uh, pre-COVID, but for a smaller organization, it can be absolutely devastating. It can finish a business off if they lose 10, 20% of their customers because they've had a data breach, because they didn't look after their information and data security assets in a professional manner to enable them to protect their customers' data. <sighs> But it's not just IT. I have kind of hinted at that before. You know, if if you look at the direct threats that are actually happening to an organization, a lot of businesses have outdated information security policies. Now, that might be due to people now working from home when previously they worked in the office. Is the information security policy updated? There's a lot looser now within the business around HR security. Have they got access rights into the building or access rights to access the right information at the right time? You know, businesses aren't necessarily keeping a complete asset register of what is the value, valuable assets within their business and how do we actually manage it? We've seen a lot of organizations with not using encryption or physical or, secu or environmental security. 
But then there's the operational security that comes along with it. How do they operate as a business and what the security processes and procedures in the back end to do it? And a lot of these direct threats are now out of date and have changed. Now, one of the big areas is around communication security. You know, how do businesses communicate now with working from home? How do they manage the users the way they can send and receive data, can get access to the information? But obviously, there's all the indirect threats that are coming as well. You know, businesses are looking for new, as I said earlier, digital transformation. They're bringing on new systems. They want to acquire new technology to enable them to improve their business processes, either to win more business or save money, make money or save money. By bringing in improved business processes helps an organization, but it's also an indirect threat because it's bringing in more information and data that needs to be protected. You know, our relationship with our suppliers, you know, we run a business, we have suppliers, whether that be legal services, financial services, operational services, or products and information. You know, how is that, with sharing that information with them, brings in more indirect threats. It's also about making sure business can continue to run regardless of the disaster, that they are covered off for things like GDPR, PCI DSS, NIST, HIPAA, CMMC, lots of acronyms there, but it's around different frameworks of governance that enables organizations to make sure they won't be hit by fines, that they are following the correct processes and procedures, that their business processes and oper the way they operate as a business maintains and is changing. But there's also internal changes within the business. And we've all seen this during the pandemic that all of a sudden people can work from home. Security has become slightly more lapsed in a lot of organizations. And businesses or people targeting businesses are looking for these new opportunities of how they can go in, target a business, get their information, whether that's a ransomware attack or whether it's just selling that information on. And businesses need to be aware that, that both direct threats and indirect threats can have a major, major impact on an organization. So as I said earlier, there are options. Obviously, what I'm talking about today is around sort of ISO 27001. It's a full information security management system. It's very dynamic and adaptive, but it also requires that independent, verifiable proof that you actually meet the standards of the framework. And it requires continual improvement. And I'll cover off how we work with organizations to help them achieve ISO 27001. And I'll talk around a couple of case studies that I'm working on at the moment, which is around the sort of businesses and what value and how we actually implemented the systems for them. But it's not just IT. Only 37% relate to IT. It's about, do you have the correct security policies in place? You know, can you organize your information security? Is HR involved in the security processes? What are the assets within the business? Can the right people get information to the right data information at the right time? You know, what is the physical security? How do people get into buildings? How is that managed? Who is involved in that process? What is the process of doing that? But then there's also the operational security, how a business works and operates how we communicate, what information can be sent to who and by who. You know, the system acquisition that I spoke around earlier and how that actually works. But also, what happens if there's an incident? How is that actually managed? And information security aspects of business continuity. How is the data protected in the event of a disaster, whether that be a minor disaster, you know, maybe a laptop stolen through to can't get access into the entire building. The major benefits of ISO 27001 is obviously it's a fully international standard, you know, adopted by over 160 countries. There are over, I think, 300 different, 300,000 different ISO standards out there. And ISO 27001 is just one of them for information and data security. But it's about giving your business the confidence that you can protect its information and data but also giving your stakeholders that same value, that they understand that your shareholders, your employees, your investors, uh, your customers, obviously, 
that they know that you look after their information and data when you're processing it. So there's a lot of additional value around ISO 27001. But there are other ones. Cyber Essentials is a, I suppose in simple terms, it's a checklist that you've looked at around IT security, around cyber security. It's a self-service checklist. You just go in and you declare that you have thought about these particular areas within information and data security within IT. It's not a management system and it does give assurances. It has a limited sort of visibility outside of the UK. It's very important for UK government and public sector contracts, but it's not a management system. Obviously, the Cyber Essentials Plus eyes me gold, which you do get that independent review and a better certificate. But it's very much a point in time evaluation. But it's not a management system and it has limited recognition outside of the UK. Uh, you know, I deal with a lot of organisations that sell into public sector and they require cyber essentials as part of the tick box exercise to do that, to sell into those public sector organisations. But they rely on ISO 27001 to put the framework in for the business of how they operate as a company. And dealing with larger organisations, ISO 27001 helps them far more than what Cyber Essentials and Cyber Essentials Plus is. But I think combined, if you're an organisation that already has Cyber Essentials or Cyber Essentials Plus, the natural evolution and moving forward to gain that better credibility in the marketplace, to improve the way you operate, to have that framework around protecting the information and data within your organisation, ISO 27001 is a natural evolution of that. It enables you to be more proactive and have better processes and controls actually in place. Now, you may already have an information security management system in place, but it might be ad hoc. It's going to be potentially informal. Certain organizations that I've worked for, some of the very, very large corporates, have ISO 27001, but they also have their own version of ISO 27001 as well that adds extra layers for their complexity and the way they operate. I spent four years at Vodafone. We had our own information security management system, but it was always underpinned by ISO 27001 because that enabled us as an organization, as Vodafone, to be able to bid for larger contracts with some of the bigger enterprises that required ISO 27001 as you must have that or you're not even going to be invited to the table. But what you need if you do have an ad hoc system is a way and deal with it in a structured manner. And I, ISO 27001 gives you that structure. You need to be able to identify all of your information assets, whether that be electronic or physical. You need to understand and determine what the threats are to you as an organization. Is it from hackers trying to access the system or is it from people trying to get access into the building or through weak HR security around protecting the users and knowing what users can have access to what information at what time? You need to be able to assess the vulnerabilities within inside the organization and understand what they can actually get in, how they can get access to your information and your data. And what you need to do really is look for the controls within ISO 27001. Look for the controls and the processes and the procedures that help organizations protect their information and data at all times. So why now? I think businesses now are looking to improve their profitability or they're looking to go into new markets or win new customers. And to do that, you need to enhance your reputation and your brand image. But it's not just based on past history. It'll be based on now. It'll be based on with ISO 27001 that you have the procedures and the process and the frameworks in place. And it's based on your current performance because it's an audited by an independent organization, whether that be through an independent auditing body like QAS or through one of the UCAS bodies like URS or BSI or any of the other UCAS organizations that would come in, look at your ISO 27001 security policies. Does it meet the required standards? And does it adhere to the framework? 
It also reduces staff-related security breaches, which you'll get cost savings around reduction in incidents. Managing incidents can be incredibly costly to an organization. You know, even if you if you are hit with an information loss or data breach or a ransomware or an attack within the business, remediating that and fixing that can be absolutely huge for an organization. Just simply mailing up all your existing customers and contacting them, ringing round has an inherent cost built into that to do that, let alone the potential lost business or damage to reputation. And obviously, we all need to meet our compliance obligations, whether that be from a legal, statutory, regulatory, or contractual point of view with organizations. You may have strict contracts with a company that says you must meet GDPR or PCI DSS or protect data in a certain way or a certain manner. And having a framework like an uh, ISO 27001 goes a long, long way to helping become more compliant as an organization. But like I said a few moments ago, I think it's really about providing those assurances. When I've worked for companies previously and I've done my due diligence around an organization to join them as an employee, I look for how they will protect me and my data that they hold on me as an organization. You know, do they have the required frameworks? Do they have ISO 27001? Do they manage my data? Because they hold a lot of personal information on me. You know, they know my name, my address, my mother's maiden name, my bank account details, my national insurance number. I need to know as a stakeholder in their business, because I'm an employee, that they look after that information for me. But it's not just your employees. It can be your customers, your shareholders. If you're looking for investment, businesses and banks and organizations looking to invest into companies, need to understand and know that that company is looking after their information and data because obviously that is one of the biggest assets within an organization and has a biggest one of the largest values is their information and their data whether that be intellectual property for software they're designing or a new product that they're bringing to market or whether it be their customer data because they're a marketing organization or a sales-led organization and it's about protecting that. It's providing assurances to your customers, suppliers, employees, and market that you are a business that takes information and data security seriously and that you can protect it at all costs. So why MSM? We are a specialist consultancy business. We've got thousands of clients across 17 different countries and provided over 20,000 certifications or consultancy that led to certifications for businesses. With that global reach, obviously UK is a key market for us, but also obviously in US, South Africa and 17 other countries. But we're not a complex business to work with. We have a very simple approach and a simple process, which I'll cover shortly. And it's about us delivering high quality ISO consultancy at a fixed price that and delivering that globally to help organizations gain the necessary standards, whether it be 27,001, which we spoke about today, or whether it's 9,001 for quality or health and safety or environmental or business continuity or IT management or any of the specialist ones around things like medical devices, which is we've seen a huge increase due to the COVID pandemic. But it's about delivering very, very high quality consultancy into organizations to make it as simple for them to achieve their certification. And the way we operate is on a, a, a simple five-step approach. We have a fixed fee structure. It's based not on your turnover, which I think is a very unfair way. It's based on the numbers of full-time employees that would uh, within an organization, which means we can give a fixed fee structure. So regardless of how long it would take us to work with you to achieve the ISO standard, and if it was 27,001, for instance, we wouldn't charge you a single penny more. So it's a fixed fee. We can also split that fee into three payment milestones to help with budgeting, to help with cash flow. So regardless of the size of organization, because we have worked with organizations from literally one man band up to thousands of employees. And we do this fixed fee. We fit around your business. We're not here to tell you how to do your business. We're here to see if, map in the framework 
to make sure it meets the required standards, such as 27,000 and what. And we fit around your business. We, we, ha- we work with thousands of businesses across many, many verticals, and we enable that business and we make sure that we fit around you, not the other way around. We give you an assigned assessor. Now, these assessors are trained and qualified in the same way our consultants are that the auditors are that coming to audit you as a business to make sure you meet the required standards. And it's about building a framework for you. We simply look to improve the way you currently work. Now, I've just done a project with a uh, an IT company. Now, they had obviously a lot of the IT security was perfect for them. But some of the operational elements, they didn't have processes done for those particular areas around access control into the building and things like that. So we help them by developing those processes for them and then help them roll them out into their business so they could get the operational benefits of improved efficiencies within their operating procedures and how they worked. But what we do as a business mainly is provide that full implementation. We are not going to send you a lot of questionnaires for you to fill in and for you to write down all the processes. You know, I'll talk about the next sort of step of how we actually deploy and how we actually do our consultancy project. But it's making sure that your journey to achieving an ISO certification such as 27001 is as simple and as trouble free as possible. The way we work, we have a very simple five-step process. The first step is the gap analysis, where we'll look at the way you operate now as a business, and we'll look at the framework, and we'll see where the gaps are. We'll see what processes are missing. We'll see what processes you currently do, whether they meet the required standard. And this is gap analysis, typically a, in today's climate, it's a remote meeting. It used to be face-to-face. But it's a remote meeting. It typically takes around about four hours. We look for the sort of stakeholders within the business, the people that if it's ISO 27001, for instance, it's likely to be people from IT, somebody from operational. And it's around about four hours where our consultants will sit down with you and go through the framework and go through how uh, the businesses work and what the processes are. And then we'll extract that information from you. We then go away and we document, and we write up all the manuals and we develop them for you. There may be processes that are missing that we can help you with. Like I said earlier, with that particular customer example, if you haven't got a process for a particular step that is required within ISO 27001, for example, we can give you sample processes that you can then adopt into your business to gain the operational efficiencies. We also look at your existing processes and see if we can improve that. We don't necessarily say you need to change the way you work, but if there's a better way through our experience of working with thousands of businesses that other organizations adopt in, we can share that with you to bring in additional operational efficiencies into your organization as well. Then we come back and we simply present them to you. Has anything changed since we did the gap analysis and we've developed the manuals? Has your processes changed? Are you now working in a different manner? How, how is it all done? And we present these back to you. And then we help you adopt the standard by bringing in, instructing internal auditors to keep up the standards up to date so that when you come up for your uh, month 12 and month 24 uh, recertification that you can get through, that we can help you adopt the standard. And then with the cert- certification at the end. But it doesn't end there. What we then do is we can work with organizations to do things like case studies and press releases. Obviously, we send you the artwork to put on your website to promote it because it's an incredibly valuable marketing tool. Now, we can work with independent and we use an organization called QAS or a UCAS body such as URS or BSI. And then the certificate is issued. But like I said, it doesn't stop there. We help you with our copywriters to do press releases, case studies, etc. So you can get the maximum value out of the PR around achieving the ISO standard. I've just come up to the end. Uh, I suppose just to sort of summarise, you know, it isn't a dangerous and unpredictable world out there. The attacks around data and information security are always on the rise. We're seeing cases and cases daily around organizations being targeted for their information and their data. What you need to do is you need to secure that information, but also prove it. 
And as I've said a couple of times now, your stakeholders, employees, customers, shareholders, investors, whatever it might be, have very high expectations of you. You know, just as you have of them, of your suppliers, etc. You know, show them that you've got the process and procedures in place. Show them you took information and data security to heart. But also ask them to return the favour and please introduce them to us because we can help them on that journey to getting the ISO that would help them as a business, which in return would help you because you know if your suppliers are also meeting the exacting standards of ISO 27001, that your information assets that you might share with them are better protected and better looked after. And this new normal that we're all living in now, we're working from home, businesses are evolving and changing. It means things are going to change faster and faster. Nobody knows what's going to happen in three, six, nine, 12 months. Are we going to all go back to working in offices and go back to normal? Or is it going to be, we're all in lockdown again and let's all work from home. And the, the way information and data is then protected and needs to be looked after will change. And things are going to change faster and faster as businesses look to evolve in this new normal. And organizations need to understand how they, what their digital assets are and their information and data security assets are, and then protect them. What are the threats and how do you protect against those particular threats? So I'd, I'd just like to thank everybody again for uh, watching this webinar. Uh, we can, or if you contact me through the details on the screen now, uh, Stephen Stobo at imsm.com, or you can get me on my mobile number. I can do, send you a free ISO 27001 guide, and then we can do an impact consultancy review and report. Or alternatively, sign up to be notified of new events and updates, as well as potential government grants and legislation changes, and you can get all this information at imsm.com. So any questions? Just have a change screen and just come back. Let me just have a look at the comment section. Right, one of them, what have you found to be the most obvious digital security mistakes some of your clients have made? Oh, that's a tricky one. Uh, it's mainly because a lot of the mistakes that organizations make is about access to the information, that who has access to it and when can they actually access it. That seems to be one of the biggest mistakes because organizations tend not to have a structured way of looking after the data, who has access, when and why. And that, that's, that's one mistake that I think organizations have made around it. Another one is potentially not looking at all the threats that are actually out there in the marketplace. You know, they rely a lot, a lot of organizations rely very heavily on inbuilt security measures associated with operating system vendors, shall we say, and not necessarily looking for best of breed email, web, or cloud. Also, multi factor authentication around that really helps around business email compromise attacked or leaked credentials. That seems to do it around that. Uh, has a data breach incident ever caused a business to lose their customers? Yes, in simple terms, and has had a huge effect on a lot of organizations. Not only the fines that I presented earlier around things like BA, et cetera, uh, Marriott and other parts of the organization, I think it was Experian was the other one I shared, but some of the stats that I've actually seen and read is around about 15 to 20% of customers will no longer deal with the business if they know they've had a big data breach. Uh, so they're the sorts of stats around the sort of 15 to 20% loss of customers, which let alone damage the reputation. You, you know, we all see it if you, if you use LinkedIn, there's breaches happening all the time and you get notified of it. It's even on the BBC's website. Uh, into the public sector, it has a less effect, 
because they're providing a service. If it's a hospital that is breached, I know that the uh, Irish uh, medical and Irish hospitals were attacked about two to three weeks ago that affected uh, operations were cancelled, etc. You know, they're not going to obviously lose their people aren't going to not go to a hospital for that. But if you're providing a service and or product out there in the marketplace and you lose your customer's data and you have to declare it, then you're potentially going to lose a lot of customers because they will go somewhere else to buy a similar product and or service. Any further questions? Nope, nothing else comes through. Right, I'd really like to thank everybody that has uh, stayed towards the end of this uh, webinar around information and data security in ISO 27001. As the screen shows at the moment, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. You can get me via email or you can get me on my mobile number. And please do go to imsm.com and register there for any future events. So I'd just like to say thank you very much again and hope everyone has a good evening and. Goodbye. Thank you.